All right, here we go. Starting to build the welding truck. This used to be my truck. Well, it is my truck still, but I had a lot of welding stuff on here, old welder, bottle stuff. I'll throw a picture up here real quick. But uh, yeah, uh, the purpose of this video is I'm gonna clean up the sides. I'm taking these gussets off. I'm gonna fix the gas or the fuel neck. I got some stuff I need to cut off. Uh, pretty much gonna prep it and paint it to accept the welder and all my other stuff that I plan on putting on this. So uh, yeah, this is gonna be a couple part series and we're just gonna hop right into it. Uh, I'm gonna roll some footage of me prepping it, taking lights out, fixing it up. I think I am just gonna throw a simple coat of paint on the bed, on the sides. I'm gonna add lights to it. It's gonna come out really sharp, I think. So uh, without further ado, let's just hop right in. First things first, we're gonna get these wires off of here. I'm gonna take these lights out. Kinda let them hang for now. Uh, as you can see, I don't know if you can pick it up on camera, but I did, uh, what I like to do when I put these lights in, and obviously, yeah, it worked out okay, but I, I like the silicone in the back to keep stuff from staying in there. Uh, I don't know, it's just something I've always done. It, it, to me, makes me, makes me feel a little better. But yeah, let's try to pop it. Right, you can see. Got them out. Uh, dielectric grease held up pretty good in there, but you can see the problem with these lights here is, look at all that junk in there. And then here, here's the kicker behind that. You know, the silicone maybe helped from the back, but um, it doesn't help from this, you know? These are kind of sealed, but it's still, I, I think that's why this rotted. This is so bad, look at this, this is a, uh, like I said, guys, I, I painted this, I primed it. You know, I, put, I think when I did this, I put three coats of primer on it and two, two coats of the black paint. And you can still see where the moisture sits right here, that it is just, this is the uh, things we got to deal with up here in the Northeast, any, anywhere in North America, really. If you live down South Florida, Texas, Georgia, Mississippi, Arizona, hell, anywhere, you know, Tennessee, Virginia, you, uh, you don't have to deal with this, but still. That's bad, but let's, uh, we'll just go down the line and take them all out and maybe we'll start flap disking this, wire wheeling it, see what we can come up with. You can see the pitting pitting on this this is uh i'm not gonna go and bondo this a lot of people would probably maybe bondo this but i'm not I'm not going crazy i am not doing all that so uh i'm gonna hit i don't know this is all kind of bubbling here so let's just uh kind of go around and hit the spots and then i'll just throw a little coat of primer on it because i'm not going to be ended up uh, painting this today or doing anything really with this today so i'll uh hit the spots and you'll get a respirator though when you're doing this kind of stuff Definitely get a respirator. This actually, this side, the primer we used on this was really good back when we built this thing like seven years ago. 
but I got it down to bare metal. I forgot I had a surface conditioning uh, disc, a cheap one from Harbor Freight. It actually worked pretty good, and now it's starting to rain, so that might uh, end my day today. So let me get a tarp on this stuff, and next clip we'll be working on this again. This is the kind of gist I'm going for. I'm taking these plates off. It's a uh, little more work than I bargained for, but hey, I'm going to do uh, what I need to do to get this thing looking pretty decent. So I'm going to do the other side. I won't bore you. And uh, yeah, we'll pick it up. We'll probably end up power washing this, get these uh, some of this flaky, uh, oh, flaky rhino liner on, get it different tip for the uh, power washer and it should get all that loose stuff up and then I'm just probably gonna roll a coat of paint over that and then we'll start getting this thing outfitted all right got the angles cut off everything that was on the bed except for that D rings I'm gonna leave on clean this up a little bit but uh, I am going to put on one of these narrow nozzle and uh, see what we can do in cleaning this uh, bed up to get it prepped up for paint so let's see how that goes It's not perfect. You know, you can obviously st still see. I can peel some of this off, but you know, I, I could spend, I could spend probably three hours with a finer, finer tip on the pressure washer and get all this off. But to me, it, it's really just not worth the time when I can just get it as good as I can and slap a coat of paint on it, heavy coat. So it is what it is. The back will get nice the sides will get nice but yeah what we got going on is uh it actually cleaned up pretty nice i started blasting this and i started i blasted that right off this is factory on dodge a little upset about that but i'm getting new doors and stuff for that hopefully uh well we'll see but yeah i'm done tonight it's getting a little dark i don't know how well you can see but um i'll show you i plan on bringing this into my uh, garage you guys know I did a shop tour and uh, at, like three days after my shop tour I said well I'm gonna move everything in my garage so here we go if you guys remember everything that was on this side is now over here because I can't pull a vehicle in this bay as you can see my house is right if I did my measuring correctly my truck will squeak in here so that's the plan Tomorrow, I will probably clean all this up and work on getting my truck in here. That's where I will do all the fab for the bumper and the lights and all that stuff. So, we'll uh, catch you tomorrow on the next clip.
fits. All right, as you see, the garage has a truck inside of it now. So what the goal is, I'm thinking for today, I'm not sure if this will be the end of the video, but for the goal for today is I'm going to build the back bumper, or I'll show you what I'm going to do there. You know, I did all this work to get this truck in here, and I do end up still having to pull it out to work on it about four or five feet. But I'd rather store it in here because every morning there's dew, we get rain, and this all just turns into flash rust right here. So I'd much rather it have, ins um, have inside my garage, and then I can just start it up, pull it out four or five feet, work on the back. One end of the day, back it in. It's not a big deal. So... Um, I also did discover a leak, a brake line, some sort of, uh, what do you call it, load sensing valve that Dodge had for like two or three years that this truck has, and uh, this is the bypass hose for it, so that'll be going on probably soon, but yeah, we're welding here, so this is a welding channel, and I'm not going to be a mechanic for you, but uh Let's just pull this thing forward and we'll start working on the back. All right, so I do have um, probably 12 feet of two by four square tubing uh, left over from a various projects. And I think that's what I'm going to use on the back here. So let me grab a tape measure and uh, start measuring, get a little angle, uh, my angle finder thing and see what we got to cut. So my goal here is I need to find this angle right here. So when I cut the tubing, it's like there's an imaginary line right there. So I have one of these, little protractor thing. Uh, pretty easy, this is how I do it. I mean, there's like, there's a, there's a lot of ways to do angles and I barely know the basics to do this and you know build a headache rack but this is what I find the easiest way for me to do it simple angles um, when you're building a roll cage or you're building anything wild then yeah you might need a little more skills up here but what I'll do is I'll run it on the bottom see that and I'll just match it really Get it kind of tight, tighten it up, and I'm going to call that 125, 125 degrees. That's what we're uh, showing here. That's what that is. The GoPro will not pick that up. but So that's our angle, I guess. Degrees, angle, I'm not sure how it all works, but this is what I have done before to cut you have to miter these two pieces the piece that's coming here and the piece that's coming here you have to miter a certain way to get that angle so I'll show you how I figure that out so already messed up 125 degrees correct we're gonna take 90 from that because everything that's better so we have 125 degrees, that's our angle. We are gonna take 90 from that. 35. So that is something. See, now this is where I'm, I don't really know. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take half of 35, which gives you 17.5. This 17.5 is the angle that you need to cut both sides of your metal with. I don't know how else to explain it. I don't know why that's like that, but this has always worked for me. I've built headache racks. Um, I actually, when I built this, I built this bed, actually. If anyone's wondering, me and an old friend of mine built this bed for one of his trucks get into that another time uh, but I have the bed now but I actually built this whole headache rack and we pretty much built this whole bed this is probably eight years ago but uh, I, I did the same thing 
when doing this angle and doing the angle up top and honestly even these so it's worked i've built a few other headache racks before so i just know that that's what i'm gonna do so each of those angles i need to cut to make the bumper i'm gonna go to 17 and a half on my chop saw cut it on both ones you got to flip it make sure you're going in the right direction and then it should line up so we'll see how it goes So I got this side cut, and what I did here is I actually, I rotated it, and I had to flip this thing so it does the right angle on this side. So I'll explain it a little better when I cut the small ones. this thing cut where I want it I got some plates as you can see to kind of rest it up on here so let's see how it goes with one person Take it. All right, that was went a little better than I thought. She's still a little loose. That's all right. Do a couple tacks on the bottom. So you use that to uh, get set right up on there. Bottom looks good. This helmet, uh, this is one of my old lenses. This one's kind of barking out or flashing on it. So. Get that rod shield lens. It's the best lens on the market. Use the promo code in the bio. Kind of the gist of this i'll probably end up putting two gussets here and then now i'm gonna work on doing the sides and uh yeah see how that goes 
All right, we got this tacked on. Uh, what I want to do next is make some sort of bracket, or not a bracket, continue this, and I'm going to go up to about here. But I'm going to have it come in on an angle to almost a point there. So I'm trying to rack my brain a little bit on what I need to do to cut it. I think I'm just going to cut that angle off on the 2x4 with a cutoff wheel. And then I'll put it in my chop saw to get that angle. And I think I should be good. So we'll uh, let's try one. I do have extra metal to, uh, in case I screw something up. I got a, about four feet here and I got another four feet over there. So let me uh, let me try doing this. inches now I go from that corner to that corner essentially probably this piece and then this piece on the other side so hopefully we don't have to waste really anything all right I'm gonna bring this outside I don't like grinding a lot in the garage so I'm gonna bring it outside and do the grinding out there Alright, so I got the gist of what I needed to do, you can kind of see, but you can also see that uh, I'm not very good with angles, so I have a gap there, down here is just kind of like, oh, what the heck went on there? But that's what MIG welding's for, I I'm not the best fabricator in the world, um, if anyone has tips on doing this kind of stuff let me know I've never really done double angled things like this before but uh, once I get it welded out with the MIG and then grind it down a little bit like it's you're never gonna see it so it's my truck um, it's still gonna look pretty sick in my opinion so let me get the other side rocking and rolling and we'll uh, get everything tacked up and then we'll take a final look at it before we weld it out check it out check it out Same thing with the other side. Like I said, I'm not a professional fabricator. Basic stuff, sure, I can do. This is, uh, I guess this would be pretty basic to a lot of people, but to me, never done something like this yet. And today's the day. So um, we're gonna set you guys up on a little time lapse and I am gonna weld this out. This will probably take a little while, so let's get to it. got a little bit to go but I'm trying to uh, I got a lot on the bottom I'm not gonna go under there but you're seeing I'm trying to go random spots to keep it from warping a little bit I guess I don't know everything's pretty solid but I'm kind of just bouncing around not just welding one thing going over there going over there so 
it's a lot of welding it's a lot of welding just for this little bit i'm kind of hoping i have enough wire because that's the last roll of wire i have and it is currently 11:50, and my weld supply closes at noon so i hope i don't run out of wire today and if i do i'm beat i have 023 wire but i'm not really trying to use that so uh, I'm gonna go get something to drink, maybe a little something to eat, and uh, let this cool off a little bit, and then we'll be back. All right, here we go. A little quick check action. Uh, Jersey folks know quick check's kind of like a gas station convenience store here. It's like a Wawa, a Sheets. Uh, I don't know what else to tell you if you're not from around here. Um, it's close to my house, and it's very quick, and I'm starving, and I just wanted it. There's a local sub place a couple towns over that's really good, but. I'm hungry, so I'm going to chow down on this. Alright guys, finished uh, lunch here, as you guys see, we got the whole back bumper, if you want to call it, finished up. Um, what I want to do on the sides here, like I said, this used to be an 8 foot bed, I had chopped 2 feet off because this is a 6 foot bed truck, fits, it fits good, but there used to be old bullet lights here, um, that were kind of measured for the 8 foot bed. I want bullet lights on the side of my truck, I like lights, um, I've always had lights on my trucks if I could. I just like the appearance, you know, riding around dusk or dawn, nighttime. I just like a nice lit up truck. So I'm going to go ahead and weld these up with the MIG welder, all of them. And you can obviously, you can probably see where I've marked where I want my lights. I want one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I have to do math real quick. I want five lights on here. And then I'm going to do a light here and then possibly three up on the rack. So I'm going to do that on both sides. But we are going to, we are going to just plug weld these holes up. And then we'll flap them down, and then I can start drilling the new holes for my new lights. Rinse, wash, repeat. Uh, I'll just do the last two. We'll start drilling new holes. All right, here we go. We got one there. That one's filled. That one's filled. And that one's filled. I went ahead and punched my holes. You guys have seen me use this. It's a uh, punch, spring-loaded punch. Pretty cool. Hold it. Got a punch. No hammer, nothing. Uh, got this at Jersey Discount Tools. Like, heard me talk about them all the time. My lay up. Just look up Jersey Discount Tool on all social media. You'll find them. But I went and center punched these. Now these lights here. This is the bullet light I'm talking about. The grommet takes a three-quarter inch hole. I think I have a three-quarter inch step that uh, I'll use. I like using step bits. And uh, I think that'll be a little easier. I think I do have a three-quarter drill bit. I'll see how that works. But let me uh, let me start drilling a couple holes in here and see how it goes. Good. Hit it with the M12, then hit her with the M18.
All right. And then I believe from there, I believe from there, I will use a step it. I need to see if I have a, th a step it that goes up to three quarter because I don't want to go any further because that's what these grommets require. Alright, that looks good. Let's see. Jeez Louise, thing's really tight. That's it, guys. Just like that. If you want to install bullet lights on your truck, it's that easy. Obviously, I gotta paint all this, but. Now let's see if I can get this thing out. That's the next thing. Usually they don't come out very easy. All right guys, I actually just went out to the store, got a couple things that I'm gonna need and you know, it's the weekend, so we're gonna get a little, little beer in us. But I'll show you what I got here. Um, all right, so this kind of goes with this. Got some loom. I am gonna run all new wires inside of the tubing for the lights on the side, but I plan on running some wires outside of it for the uh, ones in the headache rack. So I got some loom, some connectors with, for some zip screws to put on the C channel. I did end up getting another step bit from Harbor Freight. They're cheap. They're 12 bucks. If I can get five holes out of it, that's uh, pretty good for me. Uh, some heat shrink butt connectors. I have a bunch in this kit. Same thing I got on Amazon, but I needed some more. This has all kinds of stuff that I really don't even need, but um, got some more of them because I'm going to use a lot of them. I'm going to use a lot of heat shrink to keep that moisture out of them connections. And then just other random things I see. I wanted some gator clips because I don't have any. Um, I want to try this stuff out for the truck. If I like it, I'm going to order a bunch of this more fluid film for the underneath because, you know, I live in New Jersey and everything rusts here. And then I got some primer and some paint. Uh, primer, I don't think I'm going to prime the deck. I really don't know what I'm going to do with the deck yet. That's kind of like the last thing. Uh, I'm definitely going to prime the back here, everything I did, and paint this whole back. I am going to do the sides as well. I'm going to prime and paint those. So I think uh, this primer, this stuff should get me by. I think I have a little primer, but listen, I 16 bucks a can. I'll just go get another one if I have to. But that's where I'm going to leave this video off, guys. If you're new, my name is Matt. This is my welding rig build. Go check out some of my old videos. Go check out Rod Shield if you guys are into 2x4 auto dim lenses. Uh, all that stuff about Rod Shield welding lenses is in my description. But... It's getting a little later on Saturday. Uh, I think we got something to do tonight, so I am gonna clean up the garage because I still need to back the truck in. Um, because I can't, you know, as you guys may be seeing, I get it right up to the wall. So I gotta move all this stuff. But yeah, that's it, guys. I'm gonna wrap it up. And hopefully, the next time you see this, that I'm working on it, we will be figuring out what else I wanna do on the back here. We will be getting lights in, possibly painting it. And then I'm hoping to get the welder on it. I have a buddy with equipment. We're going to bring it over there. He's going to help me out. That'll probably be a video in itself. But if you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe. You guys aren't going to want to miss this build. I think it's going to be pretty sick once it's said and done. And yeah, that's it, guys. Thank you. I appreciate it. 
and we'll catch you on the next video. See ya.